So one of the drawbacks of being a major international film producer, coming up with videos that garner literally tens of views, well, it's not the hordes of baying fans. One of the issues is it takes up rather a lot of disk space to record all the footage and then edit them and all that sort of stuff. And when I hit that issue directly a couple of weeks ago where my Mac Studio, literally it's two terabyte drive, ran out of space. So I've got a NAS which has got four four terabyte drives in it. But my NAS is set up in RAID 1 which means that I lose half the space. So if I lose a disk that I don't actually lose any data. So that means my 16 terabytes worth of disk space actually is eight terabytes of usable space. All that to say that if I started then loading up movie assets onto the NAS, I was gonna run out of space pretty quickly. So that led me to thinking, well, I better do something about that. So when it comes to storage, there's really three kind of main use cases. The reasons why you might be looking to extend or expand the storage you have available. The first is really simple. Maybe you've got a machine and you're just running out of disk space on it. It's got an internal hard drive and maybe you've just running out of space. And so you just need to extend it somehow, but it's not easy to upgrade it yourself. You can't just take out the disk. Maybe it's a, a laptop or a Mac Studio, something like that, where it's not easy to just put another disk in. So in that situation, Situation. Very simple, you go for a external hard drive, which can either be an off-the-shelf thing that you buy, it comes as a hard drive in an enclosure with a cable, you just plug it in, away you go, that's just an extra drive that you can use. Alternatively, it really suits the situation where if you have some spare hard drives lying around, you can pop it into an enclosure like this, which are very cheap, these are 20, 30 quid each, pop a hard drive into one of those, cable it into your machine, and then it just appears as a hard drive. That's super simple. In that situation, you're gonna want something quite fast reading and writing, so, so probably an SSD is the ultimate solution there. The main drawback of this, see it's only available to the machine it's plugged into. Now, there's nothing stopping you taking it and plugging it into another machine. And of course, the other issue with this classic DAS is that it doesn't give you any fail safe. It doesn't give you any redundancy. So that is a single disk. If that disk fails, and you don't have any backups, then it's lost. But then we get into the realms of network attached storage, so NAS. And that is where you have a disk or a bunch of disks attached into your network somehow, and those disks are then available to every machine in your network, whether that's on your Wi-Fi or your local area network. And this suits a purpose not just for storage, for putting stuff somewhere, but also for media servers and so on, so that your television, for example, can read from your DLNA compliant NAS and read your movies and, and you know and play movies across the network that's one of the most common use cases but there's loads more right so there's lots of other things that a NAS box will do you can run virtual machines on it it's got surveillance software there's media servers there's photo servers there's Kubernetes clusters there's all sorts of things you can do on a NAS box they come with their own operating system, so the box itself, internal, will have some sort of flash storage on it, so it's gonna have an operating system, it's gonna have RAM in it, it's basically a mini computer. So the question you need to ask yourself there is, well, do you need those features? Now, I've run NAS drives for many years, and I've been a big fan of Synology for a long time. Going all the way back to this, DS212, that probably late 2000s. This DS215, that would have been from late 2015, 2017, something like that. And I now run a full bay DS9 something or other in my server box. And that is what I use for all of our central media and running surveillance cameras and all sorts of things. And so when I hit this situation where my Mac Studio ran out of space, my instant thought was, I'll get a modern Synology disk station, a two bay disk station, I'll pop it in here and that will do. And then I can use that locally in my machine. But it turns out that Synology have gone evil. Much like most other tech companies that start small with a fantastic product, uh, and then they get investment money and all sorts of things. They went evil and they started to try and enforce 
that you could only use Synology drives in their new disk stations. Synology historically have not been a disk drive company. They've been a NAS enclosure, a disk enclosure company. Disk drive design dates back a long time. So the big players like Seagate, Western Digital, Toshiba, these companies, they've been doing it for a long time. They understand drive design. Whereas Synology were forcing their way into the market purely because they could capitalize on their position as being the market leader for NAS enclosures. Quite frankly, that is just a horrific approach to take and I cannot endorse that. Now, funnily enough, as I record this video, they have unwound that decision. So now it is possible to use third-party disk drives. But when I discovered this, I quickly decided against getting another Synology disk station. If I was to go for another NAS enclosure in the future, I would be looking at the Ugreen range. Everything I've seen about these so far have been really promising. So the Synology disk stations, they are really expensive. The technology in them is really old. So at best you'll get a two, what you get a single two and a half gig ethernet port. Um, but you're getting really old Intel processors that even Intel themselves don't sell anymore versus a Ugreen product, which is the sort of the new guy on the market. You're getting high speed ethernet ports. You're getting at least double the RAM on board. You're getting anywhere from eight to 16 gigabytes of RAM on board. Plus you're getting the modern mobile processors in them. So if I did want to go to a NAS box in the future, would be definitely looking at these Ugreen machines. In this situation, what do I really need? The problem I've got is that editing films like this, it takes up a lot of disk space, but also trying to copy big files across my network is quite slow because of the way the network is set up. But what I really need is the best of both worlds. I need the benefit of a redundant file array, something like a RAID enclosure, but I need it to be attached directly to my computer so I get the full speed of USB 3, which if it's 3.1 or 3.2 is gonna be a, at least 10 gigabits per second, much faster than the network. These are Seagate IronWolf Pro NAS drives, 16 terabytes each. And for that, I've got one of these. This is a Terramaster, something, something, something or other. I even opened it yet. It's exciting. Box. This. Beautiful, look at this. So that is a two bay direct attached storage enclosure, USB 3.2, so it should be super speedy. RAID control is set on the back. That's cool, that's really cool. Uh, now this thing, so the Synology DS225 I was looking at was more than 300 pounds. This thing, 100 quid. I'm gonna put two drives in here, I'm gonna fire it up, I'm gonna attach it to my studio, and we're gonna see what happens. Uh, so we've got it plugged in, we've got two chunky great discs in there. Uh, we've got it set in RAID 0 mode, so we should get maximum performance across the two drives. But if one of them explodes, we lose everything. But we get the full 32 terabyte fucking monster. Um, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do next. I just plug it in. It's got a button on the back. It's got to be, isn't it? Just Chuck that in there. Um, let's see what happens. Oh, it's on! It 
It's kind of beeping. Is that good? I don't think beeping's good. Press and hold the reset button. Format the RAID on your computer. Warning. Clearing or changing the RAID mode. Yeah, we know that. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Still beeping. Okay, right, so the, uh, that has gone really well. Turns out one of the drives is faulty because you chuck it in the TerraMaster and it just doesn't recognize it. Do the other one and it sees it and it's absolutely fine, but you chuck both in together or that one in on its own and it doesn't see it. That's a bit of a pain in the plums, uh, which means I'm gonna have to return that, get a new one and yada yada yada. But it doesn't really change anything because the point is that if that worked, uh, that would be two 16 terabyte drives, either in RAID 0 or JBOD, which would give me 32 terabytes total, but no redundancy if one of the drives failed, ironically enough, versus if you put it into RAID 1, you only get 16 terabytes total storage, but if one of the drives fails, then actually you've got some redundancy, you can buy a new drive and pop it in and you won't lose any data. So that's the thing, right? So there's, that's where we've landed on this whole little lava. So that's kind of it, that's the end of this one. Um, bit of a random video. Um, it hasn't really gone to plan because this didn't work. Yeah, no. no, come on, bye.